Hello, everyone. My name is Manvit. I'm Sanjit. And I'm Banu. Back and again. Banu made a return to recording. And this. today, yeah. And today we're going to be talking about how black holes are made. Uh, In Unit 2 of the Surrounding 101. Uh, unit 2 just talks about stars, galaxies, and black holes. And this is our last video of Unit 2. Next unit, we'll be talking about the solar system, our home. So let's get started. So what are black holes? A black hole is a region of space-time where nothing has enough energy to escape its radius and get sucked, sucked into its center. General relativity thinks that enough mass in a small place causes a black hole, which uh, deforms space-time. Even with all this mass, it's nearly impossible to de detect a black hole as it reflects no light. Quantum field theory thinks that the event horizon, which is the part of the black hole where everything gets sucked into, emits uh, something called Hawking radiation which is an electromagnetic radiation due to the black hole capturing an antiparticle uh, particle pair uh, due to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which uh, with very low temperature, which also makes this radiation very hard to detect. We've detected supermassive black holes, ultramassive black holes, intermediate, intermediate and stellar massive black holes. Um, and uh, supermassive and ultramassive black holes are re relatively easy to detect because, they lost, because of their large accretion disks. But intermediate and stellar mass black holes are hard to detect because they have a very small or no accretion disks. Uh, next, Monet will be talking about the formation. So when a star ends the near of its life, um, which is when the core of the star becomes iron, it is not creating enough energy to push back against the gravity. So it finally collapses. Now, the reason it turns into a black hole is because the star is so heavy that even as it collapses, the core will get hotter and hotter um, and still won't hold up against the gravity, which causes a supernova or, or hypernova in some cases. And since there is so much mass concentrated in one point, there is such high density that it bends the fabric of space-time so much, it creates a singularity. The space-time fabric is so bent and deformed that not even light can escape its gravity, creating a black hole. Now, a star has to be at least four solar masses or bigger to create a black hole, or three solar masses or bigger, but less than four to create a neutron star. We will talk about neutron stars in the next course of astronomy. Now, the white dwarf of the star, if it goes beyond 1.4 solar masses, of which is the Chandrasekhar limit, aka Sanjit's great grandfather, uh, <laughs> will turn into a black hole or neutron star because even the electron degeneracy pressure which is the pressure electrons can exert against gravity, can, cannot stop the gravity from collapsing the star. This could happen if two white dwarfs collide or if a white dwarf accretes matter from another star. A neutron star could also collapse into a black hole if it collides into another neutron star or accretes matter from a binary system, which could increase its mass beyond 2.17 solar masses. Even the neutron degeneracy pressure cannot hold out against gravity, which would cause a collapse. This limit is called the TOV limit or the Tolman oppenheimer third best Christopher Nolan movie, if you know what I'm talking about, or the Volkov limit. Now, you might be asking uh, how the mass is lost when the star goes uh, to a neutron star or black hole or white dwarf. So um, what I mean by this is that a star could be 100 solar masses, but the black hole itself could be like um, much, much less. So like maybe like 5 to 10 or somewhere around there. So the reason why is because when the star collapses, it ejects all of its outer layers, creating a planetary nebula, causing the white dwarf to have less mass. Now, if the star is big enough, it will eject all the outer layers as well and make a supernova or slash hypernova if the star is really, really big, causing the neutron star slash black hole to have less mass compared to the star. We're talking about stellar mass black holes. These black holes are formed when massive stars exhaust their nuclear fuel and undergo a supernova explosion. If the remnant's core's mass exceeds a critical value, approximately three solar masses, it collapses to form a stellar black hole. Stellar black holes have typically, typically masses ranging from a few solar masses to around 100 solar masses. Next, Bonnie is going to talk about the intermediate and supermassive black holes. So, as the name, uh, for intermediate black holes, as the name suggests, uh, intermediate black holes have masses between stellar black holes and supermassive black holes. Their existence is not yet confirmed with certainty, but there are but they are theoretically predicted to form through various processes such as merging with smaller black holes or the direct collapse of massive gas clouds. 
and supermassive black holes are the are the super large black holes found at the center of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Uh, supermassive black holes are masses, uh, masses ranging from hundreds of thousands to billions of times that of the sun. Their exact formation mecha uh, mechanisms are not fully understood, but they likely grow over time through creation of surrounding matter and merges with other black holes. Over to one, we talk about ultra-massive black holes. These black holes are the biggest objects in the universe. Um, at about 10 billion to 40 billion times the mass of our own sun, um, astronomers believe that the ultramassive black holes can be found at the centers of large galaxies, such as the Andromeda galaxy or other galaxies. So now let's talk about primordial black holes. These are hypothetical black holes that have formed in the early universe shortly after the Big Bang. Unlike stellar black holes, they would have formed from gravitational instabilities in the early universe, and their masses could range from very tiny to somewhat larger than stellar mass black holes. Primordial black holes have not been definitely detected yet. Um, so what we mean by gravitational instabilities is that like, um, so like the collapse of gas clouds or molecular clouds and whatnot. So now Sanjay will be talking about miniature to uh, and micro black holes. So another type of hypothetical black hole is the miniature and micro black holes. Uh, and these are hypothetical. Uh, so they might they might exist in certain theories of extra dimensions of high energy physics. Micro black holes would be tiny subatomic sized black holes with masses well below that of the solid blast black holes, making them extremely challenging to detect with current technology. Uh, next, Manu is going to be talking about the parts of the black hole. Yeah. So uh, before we talk about that, we technically have created uh, a micro black hole. It's just that we haven't detected it in nature. So, yeah. so now let's talk about the parts of the black hole. So let's talk about the event horizon first. Um, this is the point of no return where matter and or energy um, that enters this can never get out again. This is basically the surface of the black hole. Beyond it, that this point, it's impossible to know what goes on, um, on inside. As no information, not even light, can escape the event horizon. And Bono will be talking about the event horizon shadow. So basically what the event horizon shadow is, is just the effect of no light being able to escape, which makes it just a dark sphere surrounding the black hole, because no light will be able to escape and give off light to our eyes. Or just wanted to talk about the creatures of this. Next, the accretion disk. This is matter swirling around the black hole, going closer and closer into the event horizon. This happens as the matter is taken from stars and other things passing by the black hole. Uh, this, the way the di this disk is created, is not too different from how galaxies disks are made. Even though it is a disk, gravitational lensing allows us to see the opposite side of the disk, over the top and bottom of the of the event horizon. If a shadow, if a black hole is not feeding on matter, no accretion disk will be present. Bono will be talking about the photon screen next. And what the photon screen is, is just matter swirling very close around the event horizon uh, before it escapes. We see as super thin rings around the event horizon, as you can see in the image. And next the, one today, we talk about Doppler beam. Doppler beaming uh, is basically, it's the Doppler effect working on the matter and energy swirling around the black hole, causing one side to look uh, slightly brighter than the other side. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the corona. So uh, before we talk about that, gravitational lensing is, um, um, is why you see the type of black hole you saw in the movie Interstellar. So yeah, uh, now the corona. The magnetic fields of a black hole causes matter to so swirl around them near the speed of light, and it's the source of X-rays with much with um which much higher energies than those from the accretion disk. But well, astronomers don't know too much about this topic. Now Bono will be talking about um particle jets. And particle jets occur near the inner accretion disk in every single black hole. This happens because of particles being rerouted into jets on opposite sides of the black hole super suddenly. The particles also travel near the speed of light, but it isn't well understood why that happened. Now over to Monica to talk about the singularity. Uh, sorry. Okay, so the singularity, Um, so what that basically is is that generally, general relativity theory predicts that this happens 
at the center of a black hole. A singularity is a point where matter is crushed to infinite density. This is where all the matter in the event horizon ends up. Astronomers don't know um, if this is a physical or mathematical limit. A singularity is a point of uh, so basic. A singularity um, is a point of infinite density, where all the matter in, is compressed to a single point in space time. Now we are not a hundred percent sure if a black hole is condensed to in infinite density because it breaks the laws of physics, as it could be a wormhole or something else. But um, the only way we could see one is um, if we find a naked singularity, with which is.